G'day boys and girls, Kupala here with another Unity tutorial video. In this video we're going to tackle a 2D block based building system similar to the kind you might find in Terraria or if you've played it King Arthur's Gold. For a system like this to work there's a few key elements we're going to need uh, and I'm going to try and cover each of those in their own separate video just to make this easy to watch and easy to manage for you guys. Like I said, there's a few things we need. One of those is going to be a block system, so we're going to need something to actually decide what type of blocks the player can have in the world, as well as if they're solid or if the player can pass through them, and their sprites. We want this all to be modular and easy to manage, so that if you do want to, you can use this in another game. The idea is going to be that this is all going to be isolated from any specific game details. Uh, so if you want to, you could be able to just drag and drop this, or drag and drop the end result, into another project and use it with your own sprites or your own world or your own player. A couple of other things we're going to need. Uh, we will need the, or at least the basis for a inventory system. So we'll need some way for the player to decide what blocks they can and cannot place. Uh, obviously this will require some sort of materials or something like that. Uh, I won't cover that in great detail. I'll leave that up to you to fill in the blanks there. Uh, but we will put something in place just so you, it's easier for you to implement that later. We'll also obviously need the building system itself. This is going to be sort of intertwined with doing some player controls. Shouldn't be too complicated and it's actually going to be very similar to one of my other tutorial videos where we covered placing objects on a grid. Uh, so if you're familiar with that, it should make this process easier. And finally, probably t probably one of the most key elements, we will need a basic GUI just to represent to the player what objects they're placing uh, and give them a few prompts as well, so maybe some text on the screen or some icons uh, just so they know how many of each object they can place uh, and where they can place them or where they can't. Alright, like most of my videos, uh, there's a couple of things that I have in the scene already. It's entirely up to you if you use these or not. Uh, I've got a bunch of sprites and I've got a player control script. It's very, very basic. Uh, I've just got a 2D player set up here. He's absolutely fantastic. You can see him now. I'm going to play the game very quickly. And you can see if we move right, left, and we can also jump. That jump's quite high. But you know, whatever. You can use whatever you like. I'll show you the script for the player. I'll bring that up now. Uh, you're welcome to use this, or like I said, if you have your own, you can use that too. Like I said, this uh, this system should be modular, it should be isolated from any of these details. So you can have your own player move script, that's not going to matter. Once we do the building system itself, you know, there'll be some details in there that you'll need to have uh, the same. But otherwise, you should be able to adapt this to whatever you want. There we there we have it. That's the player move script, and I'll just show you. The, I'll show you the, the player's settings now. They're just down here. Player move script. Uh, they're nothing too fancy. Uh, I do have a ground layer, and I'll show you the ground in a second. So you'll need to set the ground to that. Uh, and the ray distance. So we're actually checking. You might have seen in the script. We're checking to see if the ground is below the player by firing a ray cast. This value here, 1.05, is the distance required for my player. Uh, if your sprite's different, your player size is different, then you'll probably need a different, a different value as well. Um, but just play with that to see what works for you. Alright, and I've got the ground here, which is just a stretched out sprite object with a box glider attached. I've got the box glider sort of halfway up the top here, just because I think it looks a bit cool or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the detail's horrible, I know, I'm sorry, whatever, I was in a rush. Um, but it's only just to show that the player's moving. If that detail wasn't there, you can't really tell just with the blue background and all. Uh, and like I said, I'm not going into details. This is this is about as good as my artwork's going to get in this tutorial. So I do apologise for anyone whose eyeballs are offended. I did not mean it. Um, but as always, I'm not much of an artist. Uh, okay, we also have some sprites down here. So like I said, I've got the player. You can see him. He's fantastic. Look at him. Isn't he great? Uh, and I've also got some sprites here to represent our blocks. I've got the one for the ground. I'm not going to use that as a block, but I have four here. I've got a wood wall, which we use as like a background for, for when we place blocks. Uh, we've got stone, grass, and dirt, which we might use as solid objects. Uh, you can have whatever you like, and you can have as many as you like. It's going to be fantastic. You'll see. Um, all right. Uh, so we've covered the player move script. We've covered the sprites. I've saved a copy of the scene. The player set up themselves. They don't really matter. You saw the settings down there. I've got a rigid body. You don't need one. It's up to you. Whatever you want. Um, probably helped. 
Uh, I've got a sprite for the player, and I've got the main camera attached as a child object to the to the player, just so it follows it around the world. I think that's all we really need to cover in terms of the setup. And then in the next video, we'll start building the block system, which is going to be the foundation for pretty much the whole thing. Uh, and the block system is going to just basically decide, like I said, which sprites are assigned to which block, uh, if those blocks are solid or if the player can pass through them, as well as a few uh, their names and an ID. So we're going to have a nice big array that holds all that data for us. We can reference that when we need to, uh, and hopefully it should make it easy to manage for you guys. Alrighty, as always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, guys, and do stick around because I am hoping to have that next video covering the block system out very, very shortly. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.